Well, praise the Lord. It's truly an honor and a privilege to bring forth the word of God to you again, again uh, once again. We thank you for tuning in to Evangelist Ministries Church. I am Pastor Jeremiah Clark, and it's a privilege and an honor to bring forth the word of God to you tonight. Amen. We thank God certain for our pastors, Bishop James E. Bolden and First Lady Cynthia Bolden. Shout outs to them in the name of Jesus. So let's get into the word of God. Hopefully you're doing wonderful. You're smiling. Because it's going to be a great day. It is a great day. Um, let's get into the Word of God. Um, there's something really burning in my spirit um, that the Lord wants me to share tonight. Um, it's really heavy. Let's let's go to um, Isaiah, Isaiah chapter 26, verse three. Isaiah chapter 26, verse three. Um, and it reads. Thou wilt keep him in perfect peace, who mine is stayed up on thee, because he trusts in thee. Trust ye in the Lord forever, for in the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you're about to do tonight. God, speak through your vessel. I lay myself aside and let you have your way, God. Speak through me, God, that healing manifests, that deliverance manifests, God, that peace manifests in these people's homes right now in the name of Jesus. We come against every attack of the enemy in the name of Jesus. We speak, speak, we speak peace and rejuvenation a refreshing to happen to your people to God tonight. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Um, it's very important. Um, there's, a, there's an anointing on me right now to speak to you about the peace of God. The peace of God. Um, as you know, we're going through a pandemic. Or we're going through a, a terrible time. Um, and, and I want you to get this in your mind and get this in your spirit. Um, yes, that's what it looks like on the outside. Um, we, we being as Christians and uh, blood-bought believers in Christ, um, it should be like when Jesus was at the bottom of the boat sleeping. And the, 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 the winds were tossing the, the ship, um, uh, basically... Um, uh, tearing the, the ship apart. And, and some of you feel like you're being teared apart by the, the winds of life, the doctrines of life, the stuff that you're doing, uh, the people in your life. You feel like you're being torn apart. But the peace of God that we're going to talk about tonight is that peace, uh, the peace giver, Jesus at the bottom of the boat sleeping. Sleeping on the pillow that he made. <laughs> and translate it, sleeping in the peace that he made. I'm going to say it again. Sleeping in peace that he made. So it's very important. Um, he that, he that, Isaiah, he that keep, keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Um, it, I, know it's, I know it's horrific. I know things are going on. I, I know uh, stuff is causing you to, I feel like you've been torn apart, causing you to doubt some things, causing you to doubt some dreams, causing you to doubt some visions. But you got to keep your mind on God because if you don't keep your mind on God, the enemy will cause you to keep your mind on him. So it's very important. Keep your mind in perfect peace. Now, let's slow down. Let me teach um, tonight. Peace is freedom from disturbance. Let me break it down. Let me break it down to you. Peace from your trouble. Uh, peace from you. Because sometimes we, we incorporate trouble. We put trouble in spots. We put trouble in position. But there is a God in us, the peace giver. There is a Jesus in us. If you're saved and filled with the Holy Ghost, you have accepted Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. And you not only accept him as your Savior, you accept him as your Lord and Savior. Now he becomes your peacemaker, which means it does not dictate peace. My, my peace is not dictated on my outside. My peace is dictated on the peace giver that's in me. I'm going to say that again. Let me slow down because I feel my heart going. My peace is not dictated on my surroundings. Ha. Thank you, Holy Spirit. My healing, I'm speaking it by faith, is not dictate on my surroundings. The doctors know about what I'm dealing with, but they don't know what I'm dealing with. Oh, my Lord. Thank you. They know about what I'm dealing with, the uh, scientific, um, 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 whatever, the scientific word for it. But God knows the root. And what you need right now is peace. A dog, think about it. When you're a child, you're a dog. If you're scared of dogs, what does the dog do? He attacks because he smells your fear. The enemy is attacking because he smells your fear. Sickness is attacking because it smells your fear. Be not afraid. Be not dismayed. 
peace, the peace of God that lives inside of you come up in you. Now, I always teach this, whatever is in you, whatever you feed the most is where reacts the first. Whatever you feed the most is where reacts first. Feed peace. Give yourself some time. Here, here's practical application. Give yourself some time to yourself to create the peace giver in you to be activated. Am I teaching? To create, to activate the peace that's in you. Because if you're so busy, if you're so busy, you never get time for peace to manifest in your life. Am I teaching? So it's very important. Let's go to peace, freedom from dis disturbance. I'm speaking by faith to you prophetically under the anointing of God. I'm speaking God's peace from your disturbance. I'm speaking God's peace in your life from the disturbance around you. But you got to keep your mind. If you keep your mind on him, he'll keep you in perfect peace. Not peace that the world give it, not peace that you make up, but perfect peace. And only perfect peace comes from a perfect God. Here we go. Am I, am I talking? John chapter 14. John chapter 14, verse 26. We're going to be talking about peace activated. His peace, the comforter, activated. The comforter is our peace. The Holy Spirit is our peace. He is our peace giver. He's more than peace, but I'm being very specific on night on peace because it's very important. What's coming, what's coming, it's going to try to disturb your peace. Here we go. Verse 26, he says, but the comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, let me, let me, say, it in your, let me say it to you. But the comforter, which is your peace, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever that I have said unto you. Now, it's very important. Fear only comes when you forget what God said already. I'm going to say it again. Fear only sets or be activated because you forgot what he said already. Now, his word will not return to him void, but what? What? Accomplish what he sent it out to accomplish, right? So sometimes we forget. Stop in there. Sometimes we forget. So sometimes you forget, you get, you get panicky. You get that panic spirit. Somebody, somebody say panic spirit. But the peace of God passes all understanding. Did you hear what I just said? The peace of God passes all what you understand right now. <laughs> I understand my children are getting on my nerves. I understand I can barely pay my bills right now. I understand I ain't got no job and I'm broke. First of all, you shouldn't say you're broke because life and death is in the power of the tongue, Proverbs 18, 21. But I understand that you have an understanding, but understand this. Jesus is your peace. So notice what I just said a few minutes ago. Notice what the Holy Spirit just had me say to you. We only panic because we forget. We only panic because we forget the power that's in us. Get this. This is deep. I'm going to hit you real strong with this. You're only sick because you didn't command your healing. Uh, I know that sounds kind of harsh to you, but it's powerful. You're only sick. You're only frustrated right now because you didn't command your peace. Right? So the comforter, which the Holy Spirit was sent. Am I teaching the thing to you tonight? The Holy Spirit was sent in his name, the Comforter. Smart device ain't being smart. Here we go. He was sent and uh, bring all things back to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto you. Now, re remember this. I'm teaching. You was already prepared for this pandemic because he already imparted you sides you peace already. So before this pandemic came, he equipped you. He, 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 he molded you for this. You were built with a storm in mind. Because you was built with a storm in mind, God already knew what was going to happen. God already knew what was going to happen to you just a few minutes ago. God already knew the, the, the breath that you just took, that you was going to need oxygen. So he prepared, he prepared your destiny. He prepared your promise. He prepared a table before the presence, oh my Lord, of your enemy. You can't sit at the presence of your enemy not in peace. Because your enemies will put you in pieces. Man, uh-oh, uh-oh. I'm preaching better you saying, I'm going to say that again. You cannot sit at the presence uh, and the table of your enemies without peace because they will put you in pieces. 
That's a word for somebody that's li- listening to me right now. Don't, put, don't let your, your calamity, don't let what you're going through put you to pieces. Because you, God, Jesus Christ has made you what? Whole. Because if he made you whole, you're not pieces. Lady, you are not trash. Lady, you're not a piece of meat. God has made you whole. Man, you're not ugly. God has made you whole. Because that's all dealing with the peace of God that passes all understanding. It don't pass, it don't pass his understanding. It passes your understanding. Because sometimes we are too good for our own good. We, we're too smart. So now we're too smart. We're smarter than God. Now pride sets in. Then you have no peace. Because you're still battling with you. You're still, you're still battling with... Let me get back to my notes. <laughs> yes, Lord. Peace, I leave with you. Uh-oh. <laughs> peace, I leave with you. My peace, I give unto you, not as the world give it. So, <laughs> you had peace before you were born. You had peace while you was born. Now you have peace now. So if God going to give you peace, why not take that peace? And I ain't talking about my dear. Peace is steel. Peace is made of steel. Some of y'all don't need no steel because there's no peace after your steel. And some of, oh, let me go somewhere else. Some of y'all need to be steel. So peace can be created. Listen, listen what I'm saying. Sometimes we need to be still for peace to be created. Be still and know that I am God. Translate it. Be still and know that I am your peace. Peace won't be active unless you give it an opportunity to be active. It will not be active unless you give it an opportunity. Peace, you being in your right mind, it won't be active unless you give it an opportunity. I'm going to say it again because I'm teaching. It won't be active unless you give it an opportunity. The Holy Spirit, which is your peace, your peace giver, will not force himself upon you. He is a perfect gentleman. He's not going to force himself upon you. Now, get out of your mind. Peace is always churchy. You're not in church. Now we're going to see if you have the Holy Spirit. Peace is, the Holy Spirit is your peace. When things are going crazy in your life, when you're going crazy in your life, can you now gravitate to the peace of God? Can you keep, listen, listen to me, I'm speaking to somebody very specific. Can you keep your mind on God in the midst of hell? That's the word for somebody. Can you keep your mind stayed up on Jesus in the midst of hell? It don't matter if you created it or not. Maybe somebody, I don't, it don't matter. But can you keep your mind Stayed on Jesus. Man. <laughs> wow. Keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Somebody say, keep your mind stayed on Jesus. Here we go. He says, peace I leave with you. Peace I give unto you. Now as the world give it, give I unto you. Now listen to this. It's very important that you understand that the world has a lot to offer. The world has a lot to offer. And they'll be quick to offer it to you first before you gravitate to what you know and who you know. I'm going to say it again. The world is quick to give you something, but will it sustain you for the rest of your life? My teaching. Will it sustain you for the rest of your life? The peace that God give it to you will remain for the rest of your life as long as you make opportunity for it, and as long as you keep it active. Notice I, I'm going to re- keep repeating myself until this sinks in our, into our spirit. As long as you give him opportunity for it, if you're still going to panic, you didn't give peace opportunity. Fear. Fear is the opposite of peace. I know I just said something that you ain't getting used to hearing. Fear is the opposite of peace. Is you gonna, are you going to fear or are you going to be in peace about it? Because that's always an opportunity. The enemy, only thing that he can do is give you the opportunity to do what you want. But also, that's why the Bible says, choose you this day whom you, what, you will serve. 
Will it be God or will it be hell? I know that, I know that ain't in the Bible. That's in J. Clark. J. Clark chapter 2. All right. Laugh a little bit. It's all right. Okay. Woo! Let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. Let not your heart be troubled, neither not let it be afraid. It's all right to look at the news, but don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let that text message that you, that you got from your family member a few minutes ago trouble you. Yes, there's, there's a difference between being concerned about something and being troubled by something. Being concerned, now, okay, now I know what to pray for, Lord. I know what to speak to. Being troubled, I don't pray because I'm in fear and I'm not at peace about it. Did I just say something? So if I'm not at peace about something, I do not what? I do not activate the power that's living inside of me because I'm afraid of it. That's just like a parent being afraid of your children. If you're afraid of your children, you're not going to tell your children, sit down. But most parents are not afraid of their children. They're going to tell, boy, if you don't sit down, I'm going to, all right, I won't be in trouble. <laughs> you know, I'm going to get black, like my daddy say. Amen. Be not troubled. Be not troubled. This is a word for somebody. Be not troubled in your well-doing. Be not troubled in your well-doing. You won't walk in the fruit of the Spirit if you're troubled, if you're not at peace. You won't walk in love if you're in, if you in turmoil, if you are disturbed about something, right? I know you miss people hugging you, but that's not always, that's always not true love because they can, they can hug you with evil intentions in mind because they're not what? They are not at peace about something. Oh, man. A lot of people are battling with sub- sin that's so easy to be set in them because they're not at peace about something. Something in them is not at peace. So that's why we, we offer Jesus Christ, which is the peace giver. Now he speaks to the thing that you're troubled by in your heart. Now he makes it subject. He says, what? Peace, be, what? Be still. When, when Jesus was in the bottom on la- lasting your priority, sleeping, and then you got in so much trouble, you had to go wake him up. <laughs> Woo! Notice, he, you had to go wake him up. Which means, oh, let me go to church. Let me, some on, on live stream right now, you ain't, you ain't never been on live stream for church. Now you just, I'm, at, I'm in trouble about something. Because something in me is crazy. Something, I got some sinful venom in me. <laughs> when I give it an opportunity, it takes over. Oh, my Lord, I just said something. When I give that, that thing in me that's uneasy, that, that sin, that, that inward uh, 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 iniquity that we teach in this church, inward sin is, is a warrant in my members because I'm not at peace about something. So I figured sexual immorality is my peace. I figured drinking is my peace. I figured looking at other women when you're married, adultery is my peace. But if you get Jesus, keep your mind on Jesus and keep your mind on. You fill in the blank. Because all of us desire peace, but all of us are not pursuing peace the right way. Right? All of us are not pursuing peace the right way. The Bible says keep your mind on him and he will give you perfect peace. That's how we get peace from God. You're learning something. Let's let's move. Let's move. Because I feel my help already. Here we go. Somebody say the peace of God. Type that in. The peace of God. Here we go. Psalms 34 and 1. Psalms 34 and 1. Now, when you develop peace, you, you, you got to do some, a certain thing. I will bless the Lord at what? At all times. You can't bless the Lord at all times if, you, if you're disturbed about something. If your mind is somewhere else. If your mind is on somebody else. Right? You're disturbed. You can't function right. If your mind on your kids, you can't function right. You know, you're doing stuff, you, you, you're, putting, you're putting flour in Kool-Aid. You know, just, you know, it ain't sugar. You know, all right, praise the Lord. <laughs> Laugh, it's all right. I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall boast, make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. So when I'm at peace, my intellect, will, and emotion 
will make her boast in the Lord. My, my soul will be subject to, my, to who I want to praise. My, my soul will be subject to who I want to speak to. Here's the thing. I know we like to speak to each other. When, when was the last time you spoke to a demon? When was the last time you spoke to sickness? I'm, I'm dealing with peace. Because we, if we're at peace about something, we're not at panic about something. Wow. You can't, you can't fight in panic. If, you, if you're panicking, you're scared. If you're scared of that bully, just for teaching purposes, you grow up in school and you got picked on, you know, you know you, the first time, you know, leave me alone, Charlie, you know. I'm just, you know, just make up a name. You had a bully named Charlie, uh, forgive him and go on, okay. <laughs> you, you're not going to uh, uh, address that, that bully if you're afraid of him, but all of a sudden, something up in you come up. You get guts. He said, I'm, I'm tired. I'm tired of this dude stealing my lunch money. Why you don't treat the enemy like that? I'm tired of this devil stealing my money. I'm tired of this devil stealing my peace. I'm tired of this devil trying to take control of my kids. And all of a sudden, man, you get this unction. You don't care who's around. You don't care who's teachers around. You don't care who's students around. All of a sudden, you get a, you get a circle, you get a circle of, of people, prayer warriors. Cheering you on. <laughs> Y'all remember that? When you want to fight, you just walk around the, the, the walls of Jericho. <laughs> you didn't have six days. You didn't have six days and seven days to do it. You had one day. What am I getting you to understand? That some of y'all being bullied. We been we, we, we some of us are being bullied by the by the devil. He putting his hand up our back and controlling us like a puppet. Uh-uh. No longer. Being at peace, being at peace in God, you recognize the authority that you have. Genesis 126, that the dominion that you have, the power that you have, according to Acts 1 and 8, and you serve God in spirit and in truth. John 424, you have no room to fear. The reason I preach like this is because I have no fear in me. <laughs> the way that I speak with authority like this under the anointing of God, that means I have no fear. When a person gives me a check for a, a lot of amount of money, I have no fear of going to the bank and cashing it. Now, here's the thing. Why we don't have no fear when it comes to blessings of God? Because the blessings, you got so used to the blessings of God, you got comfortable with the blessing, but you didn't, got, you didn't get comfortable with the blessed giver. We got to understand that God is not just a God of blessings, but God is a God of instructions with those blessings. Because you got to be at peace. You gotta, let me get back to scripture because y'all know, y'all know I like to, I like to, praise the Lord, I like to talk. Amen. Y'all learning so Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all of my what? Fears. We're only afraid of something because we are not at peace about it. If you're not, you're only afraid, I just gave the analogy of a dog. You're only afraid of a dog because you're not at peace about facing a dog. Some people don't like to speak in public because you, you're afraid. You're not at peace about it. Uh-oh. Here we go. <laughs> I sought the Lord. He did deliver me from what? All my fears. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I'm going to keep saying that. I sought the Lord, and he heard me. I'm speaking my faith that you seek the Lord where he may be found. Notice what I just said, where he may be found. Because all counsel is not godly counsel. Okay? Just because your friend know about God don't mean you know him. Right? I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and he delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. Wow. How many people, when was the last time you were bold for Christ? You wasn't ashamed. You wasn't worrying about nobody. I ain't talking about a shout. Because we're good at shouting, but when the music stops and the church service is over or we can't meet in the church, we are ashamed. 
because we at fear about something and we're not at peace about something. Okay, something else is warring. Something is like, ah, oh, man, I don't really want to do that. Some of y'all got visions. Some of y'all sitting on visions right now because you're afraid. You're in fear. But I speak by faith. Hey, don't be, don't be afraid. In my book, don't be afraid of their, their faces. <laughs> I, I'm not able to do it. I, I, I stood. I, 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 I stood a little bit. You know, I got a speech impediment. You know, I, I can't. I can't. Hey, you just said the wrong word. Stop saying you can't. I said, stop saying you can't. You can do all things through Christ that what strengthens you. Philippians four thirteen. Notice what he says: through Christ, not fear. Through, through Christ, because get this, write this down. You can do anything through anything, but can it, what, where you went through, sustain you through it? I just said something. You can do anything through anything, but what the thing that you went through, can it sustain you through it? He said, Pastor, what you're talking about? Gift and callings without repentance. So that's people, this is using this for metaphoric teachings. There are people that are walking in gifts, prophetically, uh, 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 read your mail, but not doing it through Christ. They're doing it through a familiar spirit. But they're not being, ups- they're not being maintained, they're not being taught, because it's not through so- a source that can be maintained. Am I teaching anything? So everybody that says, Lord, Lord, Everybody that says, Lord, Lord, everybody that says, hallelujah, Yankee Doodle. <laughs> shout, 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 Robotessin, you know, just Mishi Bishi, you know, just, hey. So it's very important that you understand the source that you're going through, the source that you, because if you're not at peace about something, you'll gravitate to anything to gain peace. But why not gain, not gravitate to the Holy Spirit, which is, which, he has true intentions for your life. Uh, he has, he has, uh, daughter, 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 I'm talking to you. He has a true intentions for your life, like that guy that you want to be with, but he don't have no true intentions. He playing with you. He is a guy that, he, he, he should not lie. He, he ain't going to lie to you. He ain't going to just put up a front for you to get you, and then when he got you, he can't keep you. You know, it's, uh, man, it's very important that sometimes us singles will, will, will gravitate to to, to the opposite sex because we are not at peace about something because we want some right now. The peace of God will pass your understanding. Pass your understanding. Lord, I think if I just get this, Lord, if I think I just get a million dollars. Some of y'all think money, that's peace and money. I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all think that's peace and money. Uh-uh. That's peace over money, God. Uh, I'm going to say it again. Some of y'all think peace is in, is in money, but peace is over money. Peace is over the government. Peace is over your job. Peace is over your children. Hey, guess what? Uh, peace is over you. Man, I'm, I'm sweating. Peace is over you. Peace is over my sweat. <laughs> Peace is over the weight that you want to lose. <laughs> and you're struggling at home. You eating and you falling asleep. You're not going to lose no weight. Praise the Lord. Bless you. All right. Here we go. Here we go. Man, y'all pray for me because I feel strength in this house. Here we go. Where am I at? Here we go. Uh, verse 12. Let's skip that. I, feel, I felt that one. That's verse 12. What man is he that desire life and love it many days that he may see good? Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking God. Depart from evil and what? Do good. Seek what? Peace. And pursue it. Oh, my Lord. The eyes of the Lord upon the righteous and his ear are upon unto their cry. So it's very important. Here's the thing. I gave you instructions. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. Depart from evil. A lot of us, or some of y'all, are doing evil because you're hanging around people that support it. The word of the Lord said, depart from evil. Another version said, depart from the, the appearance of evil. So if they look like it's nasty, hey, run! 
Let me do that again. <coughs> if it look nasty, run. That's my squad voice. Ah. Yeah, all right, there it is. Thank you. Depart. I got some laughs in the house. My two-member church, my four-member. Thank you. All right. Depart from evil and what? Do good. Hey, pastor, what type of good you talking about? I ain't talking about what the world calls good because what the world calls good is bad to God. Hey, seek the word of God. Seek first the kingdom of God and his what? And his righteousness. Translated means his good. His righteousness. His good. And all these other things shall be added, what, unto you. What is the things you're talking about? The job that you want. What is the things you're talking about? The education that you want. What is the things you're talking about? The car that you want. What is you talking about? The house that you want. Am I preaching to you better than you saying amen on that screen? Woo! Here we go. I speak my, I, I mean, I, I get my, my second win. Here we go. Seek what? Peace. Do good, seek peace. Do good, seek peace. Do good, seek peace. Because if you're doing good it's not, and you're not at peace about it, maybe you're not doing something good. Boy, that's the fire. When Jeremiah says, it's like, fire, not this Jeremiah, but you know, praise the Lord. Do good and seek peace. Do good and seek peace. So if that's messy, you can't do good over there because you're not at peace about it. Right? You can't do good with that mate because you're not at peace about it. Hey, hey, single, stop ignoring the signs. Hey, I know you're trying to do good. I know you're trying to abstain from sexual immorality. I know you're trying to abstain from fornication. Hey, but get this. You got to be at peace about it. You got to be at peace about it in God. How are you going to be at peace about it, pastor? You got to fast and pray. That God, now God, hey, give me peace about this. Hey, there's nothing wrong with asking God for a sign. Did you hear what I just said? There's nothing wrong with asking God for a sign. But guess what? When he give you the sign, don't want to know it. Because usually when he give you a sign, it's something that you don't agree with. It's something that you really don't want. In my preaching to you. He says, do good. Woo! Y'all learning something. Do good. Seek peace and pursue it. Do good, seek peace, and pursue it. So I'm going to do everything in my power uh, under the unction of the Holy Spirit to produce and to pursue the peace and the good of God and de by, while departing from evil. Submit to God, resist the devil, and he will, uh, he will flee. Sometimes he'll walk away, but sometimes we'll walk to him. Sometimes the devil is so busy walking away, and we so busy walking to him. Because remember, I just said because you're not at peace about something. So if you're going to submit to God, you can't have one foot over here and one foot over there. You can't be two-faced. You can't be straddling the fence. If you're going to really submit to God, if you really want peace, you can't have, you, right, get this, you can't have the peace giver and the substance that you think giving you peace. I'm going to say that again. You can't have the peace giver, the prince of peace, and the substance that you think giving you peace. You got to choose one. You going to choose God or you going to choose the devil? Remember, I just said, God don't force himself, neither does the devil. Uh, I'm going to say it again. I'm sweating. I'm teaching. The devil does not force himself, neither does God. Both of them present. He, that's why the Bible says, choose whom you will serve this day. So he didn't give you a time limit. He didn't give you a, <laughs> he said, this day. Stop. Huh, I want to be over here. I want to be over here. <laughs> hey, stop being two-faced. Depart from evil. Seek peace. Do good. Seek peace. Pursue it. If I'm in pursuit of something, I'm going to do everything in my power to get what I'm pursuing's attention. Singles, if you're going to pursue, brother, if you're going to pursue right, you're trying to do everything in your power to get that girl's attention. That girl might not be even stunting you. If she's good, she ain't. Right? So you're buying this, you're buying that, you're trying to, uh, blah, 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 boo. But get this. If that young lady is, is smart and don't see peace in you, let me get back to Scripture. Woo! My heart going. Here we go. Peace I give unto you. 
The face of the Lord is against them that what? Do evil. To cut off remembrance of them, what? From the earth. Here's the, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> I don't want to be cut off. That, that wouldn't give me peace. <laughs> being cut off from God, even being cut off from the face of the earth, which means, which means in other words, being cut off while well, I don't have no dominion. When I speak a thing, it don't come to pass. I have, no, I have no impact. I have no impact in my area of dominion. I have no impact. It's just like me saying to a, a demon, he's going to say, Bishop, I know. Pastor K, I know. But who are you? So I've been cut off from dominion. I've been cut off from the privilege of peace. <laughs> I've been cut off from the privilege of peace because I, you're only going to function, somebody write this down, you're only going to function if you have peace about it. You're only going to function if you have peace about it. In my teaching, here we go. Here we go. Last scripture and we're done. First Peter. First Peter chapter 5 verse 6. God is speaking. God is speaking and we're listening, Lord. It says, humble yourself therefore under the mighty hand of God that he may what? Exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him for he what? He careth for you. I'm encouraging somebody. Now, humility, being humble. It takes discipline to be humble. Right? Nowadays, with the pandemic that's going on, you do something nice, you know, pride tries to rise. Hey, it ain't, it ain't about you. Uh-uh. It's about helping the body of Christ. It's about helping the world. We're the only Jesus that some people seeing right now. Get this. The world watch you while you under pressure. Hey, they ain't too much watching and studying you while things going good. They're watching while your, your peace is being tested. Because guess what? Their peace is always being tested. That peace is always under destruction because they don't have the peace giver living in them. Humble yourself under the mighty hand, therefore under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Now, here's the thing. Church, I got I to gotta, I gotta talk to you. Now, God, his, the real people of God, God is exalting them to speak. God is exalting them, giving a, a certain platform from his purpose to speak. I'm going to say it again. He's giving us a platform to speak to the world based on what's going on. What are we speaking? Because we, if we're not at peace, we can't speak peace. If we're not at peace, we can't speak peace. I'm going to say it again. If we're not at peace, we can't speak peace. Humble yourself because he's going to exhaust you. Cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. Now, here's the thing. There's nothing wrong with just, you know, taking some time. Just get over yourself. I'm going to say it again. There's nothing wrong with taking some time to get over yourself. It's very important. Let me teach. Let me slow down. It's very important that you get a time in your day that you spend some time with yourself. Because some of us don't know ourselves. Some of us are not at peace about ourselves. So you need to spend time with yourself, you and God. Because why did I say you and God? Because sometimes when we start to learn ourselves, we beat ourselves up. And we will spend time with God learning ourselves. He builds us up within ourselves so we don't beat ourselves up. You see what I just said? If you spend time with God, hey God, show me me, but how t t tell me how to change me. Do you? Because you're not gonna change yourself by yourself. You need you need a source, you need a power, you need you need a God, you need a Jesus. Notice what I just said. You don't just need a God because he created you, but you need a Jesus because he needs to save you. <laughs> wow. I say you don't just need a God because he created you, but you need a Jesus because he needs to save you. All right, I'm going to put that in the song later. Here we go. Cast your cares. I'll let Bishop have it. Cast your cares upon him for he cared for you. Be sober. Be vigilant because the adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion walking about seeking who he may devour. Be sober. Be vigilant. Hey, stop being intoxicated with something else or somebody else. Now, I know intoxication, we always talk about drug, I mean, drinking, 
But sometimes, most of the time, we're intoxicated with a, a spirit that's not of God. Or oppressed, or led by a spirit that is not of God. It may be stealing. It may not be giving your tithes. You're stealing from God. <laughs> right? Or it may be, oh, I need some, I need this. I need, I need her. I, you know, hey! Be sober, be vigilant. Because the adversary, the devil, is seeking whom he what? He may devour. The, the objective of the devil is to kill, steal, and what? And destroy. But he cannot kill and steal and destroy if we make peace within ourselves through Jesus Christ. He cannot kill your, your joy. He cannot kill your enthusiasm. He cannot kill your dreams because you have peace of God. I know God going to do it. I know God going to do it. Somebody stop that in, this, in, the, in, the, in the comments. I know God's going to do it. I know God's going to do it. I know God is doing it. I'm encouraged you by the Spirit of God. Don't lose, don't lose sight. Don't lose focus. Don't lose focus. Some, you know, when I think about people wearing glasses, they can't see without their glasses. And they take their glasses off to clean them. But they, they can't see. Hey, I'm using that metaphor. Stop taking your glasses off to clean them and, put, and keep them on the seat. But that means you taking the break, you're losing focus. I can't, I can't really see. I can't really see. You catching my drift. I can't really see. I, I, I'm having trouble. Can you see? Hey, stop depending on other people to see for you and see for yourself. Right? See for yourself. Woo! Be sober. Verse 9. Whom? Resist the steadfast in faith, knowing that the same afflictions are accomplished in your brethren that are in the world. So I'm encouraging you, and I'm closing now. I'm encouraged you by the Spirit of God, the anointing of God that's on my life. I'm speaking to this camera. I'm speaking to you by faith. I'm speaking to you as an individual, face-to-face -face with God. I'm speaking that you be strengthened, that you stop walking in fear, that I speak peace in your home. I speak peace in your children in the name of Jesus. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. You are great in God. You're not great in yourself, but you're great in God. I speak by faith. In the name of Jesus. I speak to your finances that you become a giver. In the name of Jesus. I speak by faith that no weapon for me against you shall prosper. I speak by faith that you get in God's word to understand his peace. In the name of Jesus. I speak by faith in Jesus' name. Be strengthened by the Christ because you're great. In Jesus' name. Now we always say in evangelistic ministry church, stay motivated about Jesus. Give God some praise. It's on like popcorn. What y'all doing? How y'all doing out there? Well, we're excited about this word, powerful word being preached. I just want to come before you uh, to let you know that for those who have not been contacted yet, that we will be having a service in the parking lot Sunday starting at 10 o'clock. Uh, we're going to be fellowshipping, so we're asking that all the people come out, mothers and everybody, and we're going to be blessed and, and we're going to have praise and worship and, and uh Lady C is going to be giving a word of encouragement. So we're just excited about it, but we will be uh, having a parking lot service this Sunday. Also, uh, we're not going to be starting to let people come back into the sanctuary for a while. We're still going to use wisdom. Uh, we're getting everything together. Of course, our Angels of Mercy team is getting everything lined up so we'll be on track uh, so we can protect you when you come in. Uh, we do have some rules that's coming down uh, from CDC, and we're going to apply those when you do start coming back into the sanctuary. Again, we miss you all. We really miss you. We love you. We love you. We, we pray that you stay motivated. Uh, in the process of your prayer time, we want you to pray for our fellow members here. Some have some uh, situations going on in their families, and make sure we pray for their health and strength. Amen. Uh, again, stay focused. Stay motivated. Study that word. Like I always say, study that word and stay motivated about Jesus.